All right, let's dive into some truly significant news from the world of medical research. We're talking about uh, a promising new step in the fight against HIV. That's right. We're going to explore excerpts from a study titled HIV Cons VX Vaccine Robust T Cell Response and Safety. So, our mission today is really to understand what this experimental vaccine is, you know, how it performed in its very first clinical trial, and what it might mean down the road for HIV prevention and potentially cure. Okay, so they put this experimental vaccine through its paces. What were the sort of standout results? What really grabbed their attention first? Well, the headline finding is certainly compelling. This HIV Cons VX vaccine, uh, it showed a really acceptable safety profile. And critically, it managed to elicit these robust immune responses in, get this, 99% of the trial participants. These were folks from Sub-Saharan Africa. 99%. Wow, exactly. And what's really fascinating here, the real potential game changer, is its ability to induce broad T-cell responses. Now for HIV, a virus that mutates like crazy, having an immune system that could hit multiple targets, multiple strains, it's not just good, it's, well, it's been a major goal for vaccine developers. Right, hitting a moving target. Precisely. Hmm. It promises much wider protection. Okay, that 99% response rate is definitely captivating but it makes you wonder, what is this vaccine exactly and how did they actually test it? Yeah, good question. So this isn't your standard vaccine approach. It uses a pretty clever two-stage strategy. The vaccine itself targets six specific parts of the HIV virus, crucially, parts that don't change much across different strains. Ah, the conserved regions. Exactly. Targeting the virus's weak spots, you could say, no matter how it tries to disguise itself through mutation. These vaccine components are delivered using harmless viruses, sort of like delivery trucks. They use a chimpanzee adenovirus, Chadox-1, for the first shot, the prime. Then they follow up with a booster using a different carrier, a modified vaccinia virus, Ankara, or MVA. This prime boost idea is key because it's designed to build a much stronger, more lasting immune response. Really important for a tricky virus like HIV. Right, layer it up. And the trial itself, how was that set up? Where did it happen? So this was a phase one randomized clinical trial. It took place across research centers in Uganda, Kenya, and Zambia. They enrolled 88 healthy HIV negative adults. Uh, median age was 30, about 65% were men. Mm -hmm. 72 of them got the actual vaccine and 16 got a placebo, you know, for comparison. The study ran from July 2021 to November 2022, and they followed everyone for 40 weeks, looking closely at safety and, of course, that immune response. And the dosing schedule. Right. The vaccine group got the prime dose on day zero, and the booster shots came on day 28. Okay. Of course, breakthrough results don't mean much if it isn't safe. So the big question, side effects. What did the trial show there? That's always critical in phase one. And the news was good. The safety profile was excellent, actually. The regimen was very well tolerated. Most reactions were mild or moderate. The sore arm, maybe feeling a bit tired for a day. Pretty standard vaccine stuff, though. Yeah, pretty standard. Importantly, there were no severe or grade three reactions right after that first dose. After the later booster shots, only about 2% had a grade three reaction, which are typically manageable and temporary. So overall, a very positive signal for safety at this early stage. That's encouraging. And the immune response itself, beyond just the 99% figure, how strong was it? What did they measure? It was highly immunogenic, definitely. It successfully generated these HIV cons VX specific responses in pretty much everyone who got all the shots. Yeah. They measured the T cells specifically and found the vaccine generated a powerful army of them. And then there was that uh, slightly surprising detail you mentioned. Ah, yes. This is quite interesting. They found that men actually had significantly higher T cell responses than women. Really? Why would that be? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It's not immediately clear why, but it's a really intriguing finding. It definitely opens up new avenues for research looking into sex-specific immune responses. You know, mm. it could potentially help tailor vaccine strategies down the line to make sure they work optimally for everyone. Fascinating. So we have the strong T cell response, but what were these T cells actually doing? Did they show they could fight the virus? Right. That's the functional part. And yes, the results were promising there, too. When these T cells were uh, re-exposed to the virus in lab tests, they didn't just multiply. They actually neutralized different strains of HIV-1. They tested against isolates from clades A, B, C, and D. And that's important because HIV is so diverse globally. Exactly. A vaccine needs to tackle that diversity to offer broad protection. Seeing neutralization across different clades is a very positive sign. So putting this all together, what does it really mean for the future? Where do we go from here with HIV prevention and yeah. cure? Well, the study authors themselves are quite hopeful, but cautious. 
They state, and I'm quoting loosely here, that they see these HIV cons VX vaccines as potentially a key part of a future combined toolkit for both prevention and cure. A component, not the whole solution yet. Precisely. But as with any early stage research, there's always a crucial however, isn't there? A key limitation to keep in mind and something for you, the listener, to think about. Okay, what's the caveat? This study mostly looked at immune responses in the blood, in peripheral blood mononuclear cells. That's what's easy to sample. But the real battle against HIV often happens deep within the body, in lymphoid organs and tissues like in the gut. That's where the virus likes to hide out. Ah, the reservoirs. So we don't know for sure yet if these T cells are active there. We don't know from this study. That's a critical next step. Okay, well, what a fascinating exploration into this really promising area of HIV research. This vaccine clearly shows a lot of potential, adding another tool potentially to the arsenal for future prevention and cure strategies. It feels like a significant step forward. It certainly does. And maybe a final thought for you to ponder, building on that limitation. If future research does confirm that these powerful T-cell responses are also happening in those crucial tissues where the virus actually thrives, how might that fundamentally change our whole approach to finally eradicating HIV globally?